Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14, Psalms chapter 2 verse 10, and Revelation chapter 2 verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for helping us to understand the times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Hebrews chapter five, verse 14, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. All right. And so God is wanting us to mature in these days, these last and evil days. He's wanting us to be mature believers. He does not want us to walk around as babes, right? Because the enemy's forces of darkness are so heavy right now. We have to grow up fast. Have you ever seen um, some of the children in, in, in places where they have to raise children, right? They have to be little adults, right? And they have to raise up other children. So when we are believers, we need to mature quickly, right? We need to grow up. We need to realize that the, the last days are here and we have work to do and we need to be sober and vigilant of our adversary, the devil, right? Because he's walking around as a roaming lion, seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't care if you're a babe. He especially goes after you when you're a babe. Why? Because you're easy to be picked off, right? If you're not connected, you're going to be easily picked off. That's why it's important to stay in the body, important to stay um, with your church home, important to to um, uh, make sure that you have a focus on being a better believer and, and maturing to deeper things. It says, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice. So we need to be in training right? And we need to be in constant practice. We need to be looking for more resources, better understanding, um, um, better, better practices, right? Um, one of the, my husband checked out a book from the library and I was looking at the book and it was on apologetics, right? We're, we should be going deeper. We should be having better understanding, better wisdom, asking questions, um, gr growing in hunger. That's one of the things, you know, as you grow, um, from a babe to uh, an adult, your hunger increases. Your hunger for the word and for understanding should increase more and more. And, and you know, when you ask God for wisdom, he is going to give it to you and not hold back, right? He is going to bless you with that wisdom that you desire. Um, it says, but solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice. So meaning that they are active walking in that way, right? It says to distinguish good from evil. So they're not just looking at the word and saying, oh, that's so good, right? That they're taking that word and they're looking around in their environment for the application. They are knowing that God is doing something in them and that he's showing them things in their personal life and that they are applying it to themselves. And I'm touching my own chest as I say that right? I'm applying this word to my own life, right? We have to be careful um, not to tell other people of the word and we're in and we're not in it, right? Mislead people or or make them think that, oh, you know, this is what you need to do. And then you turn around and, and you're doing something else, right? This is our walk with the Lord. It is a personal relationship. And so if we want to mature, we have to eat Hard, um, I was going to say harder food, but um, tougher food, right? Things that we have to think on, things that we need to meditate on and, and things that we need to take seriously, right? Let's keep going. Psalms chapter two, verse 10 is the second verse the Lord gave me. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. And so, you know, this is, is talking, you know, about the fact that we're all a king, right? We're all kings in some sort of kingdom. It could be your little house. It could be over yourself. It could be over you and your dog. It could be over you as a manager. It could be the president. It could be whatever king, right? And so when you are a king in your kingdom, 
you need to be a wise king over your kingdom. Whatever kingdom God has put you over, right? You need to be wise in your dealings. That means that when you get in your car and you go drive around the city, your application of discernment, your constant practice to distinguish good from evil starts there right? It starts when you get up and wake up in the morning and how you greet one another, how you start your day, how you talk to the Lord, how you meditate on his word and take it seriously, right? It says, now therefore, O kings, be wise. So God doesn't want us walking in in um, ignorance, right? He wants us to walk in his wisdom. It says, be warned, old rulers of the earth. So something is coming, right? A great distress is coming. Something is coming um, to the earth. Something is coming for the rulers, right? Those those that are kings, those that have, have position, right? Those that are high in their own eyes are going to be brought low right? Those who um, have not sought God and not sought his wisdom are going to be humbled. And God wants us to distinguish good from evil in these last and evil days. He wants us to live holily, right? Um, Even while others who are in high positions are doing something totally different than you, right? It could be other mothers that are doing the opposite of what you're doing. It could be other bosses that are that are doing the opposite of what you are doing, right? Um, and and God is is showing Himself strong in you in that, right? Because um, Psalm two is a, a prophecy about you know um Christ right? Um, and how the nations are conspiring in vain, right? And how these kings and these rulers of of these um, um, evil kingdoms are rising up against God. And so even in the midst of other kings and kingdoms that are going in the opposite direction, other parents that are going in the opposite direction as you, you have to stand firm in faith. You have to be mature. You have to constantly practice your faith right? Your, your discernment, your distinguishing of good and evil. That's a daily practice. Amen. All right. Let's look at this third verse. It's so wonderful because it goes so beautifully with these um, verses in our meditation. Um, Revelation chapter two, verse 16, therefore repent. If not, I will come to you soon in a war against them with the sword of my mouth. And so, wow, wow, that is Christ. He is talking to the church at Pergamum. And it is something else, right? Because this so goes with what we're speaking on. God always gives us such great revelation when he gives us these scriptures. It says, therefore, repent. And so what are they repenting of? Well, the church of Pergamum has some issues, right? Number one, they were where um, Satan's throne was considered to be at, right? And so that in itself is like, what? They lived where Satan's throne is? Many people believe this is where Zeus, um, um, his throne was. And so Zeus was considered Satan, right? And so here we don't, there's no understanding of that, but it just does say that Satan's throne is, right? And so um, here he he's talking to them and he tells them, um, even though those who are of the church of Pergamum are around all of that, they still don't deny Christ. Even when one of uh, a great believer was persecuted and killed in the midst of Pergamum, um, they did not deny Christ, right? They didn't turn against um, God. They, they remained true to his name. And so um, even though they were in such a great place of hostility, right? And so that we can look at that word and see ourselves in that, right? Because even though, you know, you live in such a big tolerant place, right? We we live in this world of numbing tolerance, right? We 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 live in this world of um of of the things that are going against God. Right. And and yet and and still we haven't denied his name. Right. And so whenever you're looking at these different churches in the book of Revelation, try to apply it to yourself, even if you don't want to. Right. You still try to apply it to yourself because you need to be real with God. You don't need to be fake. 
right? Don't say, oh, that's not me. This one is not me. So you know what? Let's just take it in and, and let God do the dealing. All right, let's keep going. It says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you that some of you hold to the teachings of Balaam. And so we know that Balaam, um, um, enticed, uh, taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin so that they ate food, sacrificed to idols and committed sexual, um, immorality. Right. And so they, um, they taught things that, that drew the people away from God. Right. And so, you know, the devil's always trying to get people some kind of way, right. Even if it's under grace, even if it's under whatever he's, he wants to draw the people of God away from holiness and back into the world, right. Some, some form of, of, of tolerant or, or some form of, um, way in which you, it's, you're so blind, you can't see, right. You, you, you don't even realize that you're walking in the wrong direction. Right. And so, um, here, the next portion, it says, likewise, you also have those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. And so remember the Nicolaitans were a conformist group. They were the church and yet they weren't the church, right? They were a counterfeit church because they conformed to new age beliefs. So anything that was of, of the new age. And, and so they, they did a little of this and they did a little of that, right? right? They were always trying to win people, but make sure that the church conformed enough to, to um, be seen as very tolerant, right? And so they, even to the point of going against the word of God. And so they actually believed that it was um, um, Nicholas, the one who had conformed and and had converted to Judaism um, from a very pagan belief system and then from Judaism to Christianity. And now he created this, this whole new cult, right? And so the people were just conforming and looking like the world, right? Sexually, um, um, they were doing all sorts of things. And, and he even mentioned, um, you know, the fact that these people, um, of the Pergamum church, you know, we're, we're eating food sacrificed to idols. And, you know, the thing is, we're so easy to look at verses and things like that and be like, oh, that doesn't apply. This, these things apply. God wants us to distinguish good from evil by constant practice. Everything in the word of God has validity today. Everything. There are, there's so much food right now that is sacrificed to idols, you guys. It is unbelievable, right? Tazo tea is sacrificed to idols as a part of their corporate practice. They lay tea out and they offer it up to the gods. Do you drink Tazo tea? Right? I mean, there are just so many things that are exactly as we speak, you know, but in this world today that, that are applied. So as you get in your car and you go around in this world, the, this word is applied to us right? Are you conforming to the practices of the Nicolaitans? Are you eating food sacrificed to idols? Do you eat things and do things even though you know that that mm, there's something about that business? Oh, there's something about that symbol, that symbol that they use. I wonder what that is, huh? Uh, maybe you should go look up what their symbol is. If there's something on it that looks like an idol, it's probably an idol. If you walk into a store and you see something waving at you and it looks like an idol, it's probably an idol, right? So do you conform to the practices of the Nicolaitans? Do you conform in this world or, or are you transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? Um, we need to be in constant practice of, of distinguishing good from evil. God is wanting us to mature. He's wanting us to be looking around in our environment. He wants us to be wise kings of whatever rulership um, he's given us because 
because those that are faithful are going to be rulers eternally, right? We want to have that, but we don't want to conform and be like the rest of the world because we get pushed back right or or because we we are king of our little kingdom and this is just the way we want to run it no god wants you to look at the word he wants you to distinguish good from evil amen and don't turn away from that don't conform like the nicolaitans don't be taken away in sexual perversion um like balaam and balak right and 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 don't go with teachings that align themselves with that right if there is a teaching and this person is a christian and they're saying things that are against the word of god that is a lie right rebuke that right and walk away from that do not conform because god is going to come against them with the sword of his mouth and we don't want to be a part of that right and and in other words too um they're going to be left behind why because the sword of his mouth which is the word is how God comes in his second coming, right? He has a sword in his mouth. And so it says, therefore, repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword of my mouth. Wow. So he's coming soon and he's going to war against them right? We don't want to be a part of that, especially because this is talking about a chasing group. This is not talking about the world. This is talking about people who consider themselves a church, people who have not denied his name, right? Who even in the midst of persecution, and yet they conform in all these other ways. They are tolerant in all of these other ways, right? And and they they walk with these new age practices, um, even though they know that they feel something in their spirit, Holy Spirit is saying, mm-mm, and you, you're still doing it. You still turn that television program on. You still do this. You still eat that. You still go there. Even though you know something in your spirit is telling you, no, listen to Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't conform to the ways of this world. Be mature. Grow up in the Lord and learn how to be of constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Amen. All right, you guys, it's for our own good. It's for our own good. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for showing us right and wrong. Even in modern days, right and wrong, you have it right here in your word, Lord. Help us to look deeper. Help us to be in constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Help us to be wise. Lord God, help us to take your warnings and heed you. Humble ourselves, pray, seek your face, turn from the all of our wicked ways. Lord God, hear from heaven, forgive us of our sins and cleanse our land. Jesus, cover us with your blood righteousness. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let us be ready for your return, Jesus. We remember you, not the Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed.